Would you have liked to have made Rolls Royce even more aerodynamic? Oh, yes, yes. I, I think you've got to. I don't think, I mean, it'd be interesting. I, I can't recall Goodwood quoting aerodynamic drag figures, and a lot of manufacturers won't, you know, because it's, it's very complicated. Yeah. Because some people can quote aerodynamic figures, which are but not saying they're cheating, but you can, before you put it into the wind tunnel, you can tape off, <laughs> you can tape off joints. Yes. You can, you can let the suspension down to its lowest possible yeah. setting. You can pitch the car. You can do all sorts of, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, and I won't use, any, no, no, <laughs> I won't use another ex example. But, and also with, with original, with, with original air dams, which do work. I mean, mm. it was an amazing, in fact, <laughs> strangely enough, the, the Unipower, this model here, it's reckoned that that was the first car to actually use an air dam. It was a British, it was a British designer. And if you see under the, the, front, the front apron there, there is a blade that runs across the car. These cars were going very quickly with a Cooper S engine, uh, um, but the, the, the directional stability was definitely a bit marginal. So they worked on it and they almost stumbled on the idea of stopping the air going under the car. And that was one of the first cars. And, and, and the people who talk about these, these things will, will say that that was one of the first air dams ever. Yeah. Really? Uh, absolutely. And um, the name of that car? Well, this is a Unipower GT. It was made at Perivale. And again, you see, uh, I, I, I haven't talked about individuals too much apart from Moulton. But, but whenever you look at an interesting vehicle, you'll always find interesting people. And some of these people are not run of the mill, they're often quite quirky, don't always fit into the bureaucracy. And, and it's one of the great ironies of, of, to me, of the motor industry, that you've got these fantastically big organizations with awesome wealth, you know, layers and layers of very, very bright people, uh, you know, astute, astute people. But you, <laughs> you often end up, the actual product is, is heavily influenced by some people that are you know, they're, they're not run-of-the-mill people. You know, they don't actually fit in 